Consistent and accurate blood pressure readings can be vital in managing hypertension. The problem is, some people don't know how to measure their blood pressure correctly. Today, as requested by one of my loyal viewers, we're covering that exact topic. Let's dive in. There are a couple different ways that you can go about measuring blood pressure. The easiest is with a digital upper arm cuff. I have a video that I went over in greater detail, the information about the Omron digital upper arm cuff. So check that out as part of my entire blood pressure series for more information. Otherwise, I'll also show the manual technique, but in all honesty, it's pretty cumbersome to try to be doing for yourself. Nevertheless, I'll still show it in case you'd like to be able to collect the blood pressure reading manually for someone in your family, or if you're a trainer watching this video and wanna collect it for your client during, before, or after exercise, you can do so. First, starting out with preparing for your blood pressure measurement. If you are not expressly collecting your blood pressure, during, before, or after exercise, and you're just trying to grab a baseline reading, then it is imperative that you avoid exercise or stress 30 minutes prior to collecting your reading. Similarly, you wanna try to stay seated, breathing calmly, with both feet flat on the floor for about two to five minutes. Make sure you're in a quiet, comfortable place and also avoid caffeine, nicotine, alcohol, or other substances 30 minutes prior to collecting the reading. All right, so since the manual method is a bit more complex, I'm gonna start with that one. And then I'll end with the digital Omron, which is really straightforward. For measuring your blood pressure manually, you will need a stethoscope, not to mention good hearing, which I do not have good hearing, but I'm still gonna demonstrate it all the same. And of course, you're gonna want your manual blood pressure cuff. I'm using this one by Paramed. It includes the pressure gauge, as well as the ability to inflate the cuff. I'll provide a resource in the link in the description below to being able to size your cuff correctly. Then of course, getting started, you put the cuff around the individual's arm. And no, it doesn't really matter which arm you put it on. Usually the dominant arm may have a slightly higher reading than the non-dominant arm. So in general, it's an okay practice to take the measurement on both arms and compare. However, it's generally okay to just pick an arm. Shimmy the cuff up to the upper arm and ensure that there is a distance of about an inch from the crease of the elbow. Then of course you wanna make sure that the cuff is not too tight and not too loose. The perfect degree of tightness before any air has been put in the cuff is if you can wiggle two fingertips into the bottom edge of the cuff, but not be able to slide your fingers all the way. Make sure that the individual has their arm outstretched, palm up, and is relaxed, genuinely. Make sure their feet are flat on the ground, they're not bracing their calves in the chair, and that they're not stooped and hunched forward. They've got their back securely and comfortably resting against the back of the chair. Then you want to place the stethoscope. You'll want to place the head of the stethoscope just below the cuff. It's going to be listening to the brachial artery, which is just a big artery running through the forearm. Then you'll want to make sure that you pump up the cuff about 20 to 30 millimeters of mercury, which is the unit of measurement of pressure in the cuff, above what you would expect for your systolic reading. And for those of you a little bit lost on the term I just said systolic, I do have an entire blood pressure series. Please check that out. If you don't know what your blood pressure reading may have been in the past or in a recent measurement, you have no idea, then you can inflate it to 160 to 180 millimeters of mercury. The bottom line is you want to inflate the cuff until you don't hear any beat. One tip when you are inflating the cuff, make sure that this valve is actually closed because if it is not, then the air will just leak out and the cuff will never inflate. So if you're sitting there pumping it, wondering, hey, why isn't it inflating right now? It's possible that this is open. Now you've got the cuff pumped up. You've got the stethoscope placed on the artery. You're listening. Now it's time to start releasing the air slowly from the cuff. You do this by unscrewing the valve very, very, very slightly and slowly. You don't wanna do it all at once because then you're gonna to totally miss the reading. It must be very slow. In general, a good pace of releasing the air should be about two lines or two millimeters of mercury per second. If you're releasing air faster than that, it's possible that you could miss hearing something. So as that air is being released and the dial is going down, 
you want to listen for the exact moment on the gauge at which you start hearing a heartbeat. This moment on the pressure gauge is your systolic blood pressure. So for example, if the needle was at 120 millimeters of mercury and I heard a heartbeat, that would be the systolic blood pressure. Then you keep releasing the air from the cuff until you stop hearing the heartbeat. The moment at which you stop hearing the heartbeat is your diastolic blood pressure or the bottom number. So a quick reminder, as you're deflating the cuff where the needle is moving two lines per second, you're listening for the first beat you hear and taking that measurement, and you're listening to the last beat you hear and taking that measurement. Obviously, you can understand why it is important to have good hearing for this part, not to mention a good stethoscope. I, of course, have neither. My stethoscope is very old and my hearing is very bad, which segues me to the Omron digital cuff and how easy it is to take a measurement with this cuff. This is the Omron upper arm digital cuff. As you can see, you don't need a stethoscope for this one. I have an entire video reviewing the accuracy from scientific literature on the Omron specifically upper arm cuff. So check that video out if you're interested. Otherwise, my general experience with this cuff is great. It was really user friendly. They have an app that you can get on your phone that also enables you to set daily reminders for measuring your blood pressure. Then when it comes to collecting the reading, same general rules apply. If you're collecting a baseline reading, no exercise, alcohol, nicotine, stimulants, drugs, 30 minutes before. Rest two to five minutes in the seated position that you're gonna be collecting your reading in. And make sure you have a table in front of you that has the ability to keep your arm elevated at or above heart level. The other general rule to follow is, yes, to make sure that the cuff is about an inch above the crease of your elbow. Same rules apply for tightness. The tips of two fingertips can wiggle themselves just at the edge of the cuff, but not slide all the way into beneath the cuff. In terms of pumping up the pressure gauge, there isn't one. Obviously it's internal in the device. There's an air pump that inflates once you hit start and it deflates on its own and it measures your systolic and diastolic blood pressure. And that's that. It makes it a really convenient way to collect your blood pressure at home and supply that information for your physician or any other medical professional or maybe even your personal trainer if they ask for that information. So there you have it. We've got your manual method that if done correctly is highly accurate and often used in clinical settings. It's not practical to do on yourself. I've tried. So that leaves the Omron Digital Upper Arm Cuff as a solution for practical at home use. Nevertheless, there is scientific research to indicate its accuracy. The blood pressure cuff you choose to go with as an investment is entirely up to you and your individual circumstances. But the bottom line is, if you follow these key principles and collecting the measurements accurately, you'll be much better off and on the road to managing hypertension for yourself or for your clients. Now, while some of you out there may be trying to implement blood pressure tracking before, during, or after exercise, for those of you who are not, and you're just trying to collect a general baseline, make sure to try and take the blood pressure reading around the same time every day, just for consistency. And obviously, should you find anything alarming with your blood pressure readings, be sure to contact your healthcare professional to help you. I hope this video has been helpful. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the entire blood pressure series as well. And if you have any topic suggestions, please feel free to drop a comment in this video. That's it for this one. And always remember your health is an investment, not an expense. I'll see you in the next one.